dear old blessed Lord, to thy cross, I Remain standing, our affirmation of faith. Remain standing. Yes. And let us do it together. And he is the maker of heaven and earth. As the scriptures have said, he was in Jesus, that he is Christ, his only begotten son of God. He is the way, the truth, and the life. He was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born in the Virgin Mary, suffered in the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. On the third day, he rose from the dead and delivered from the grave, death, and hell. He has gone back to the Father to prepare a place for us in his kingdom. He will come back to judge the world and to deliver the righteous. We believe in the Holy Ghost, the Christian church, Beginning of saints, beginning of saints, and the rest of the heart and trial of true believers. Amen. Amen. That we do. Now we're going to get ready to hear from the vessels. If they would come at this time, the vessels. 
All right. Sang yo. God in this house. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on and put your hands together. Come on, let's Come do on, it. Let's do it. Let's do it. If y'all can stand up, it would be great. Come on. Come on. Let's bless the name of Jesus. It's all about him. We come to give him glory.
loves him. Praise him. He lifts us up when we are down. He lifts us up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo. My God, my God. Yeah. Somebody should have been moving now. Somebody should have been moving. Because they're seven way down. I heard a young lady said, Lord, he lifts us up. Even when we don't feel well, he lifts us up. I don't know about you, but I've been sick. And when I was down on my bed of affliction, he picked me way up. He lifted me up. Turned me around. He put my feet on a solid ground. Lord, I don't know what you come to do. But every now and then, I said every now and then, I can feel God moving and he will touch your body. Not only will he touch it, but I know him as a healer. I know him today, church. My God, he lift me up. Y'all couldn't have done that better on that one. Somebody's still down. Somebody's still down. I dare you to call him. I dare you to call him. I dare you. Ah! Ooh! Yeah! Lord, you lift me up. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I know, I know we always been up. Somebody's been down. You better get up and praise him. You feel better. You better praise him. God is able to do all things. All things. I know him. I know him. As a burden barrier. I know him as a hard regulator. I know him as a company keeper. All right, all right. Yes. All right, all right. All right now. 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 All right now, somebody say if I could just wait. Woo! Yes. All right. Uh -huh. Oh no. All right. Yes. Somebody know him. As a burden barrier. Somebody know him as a heart regulator. Somebody know him. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Be quiet. Sit down. Sit down. Oh! All right. All right. All right. If I could just wave my hand. Just wave your hand. Woo, Lord, look at the hand. Look at the hands. Look at the hands. Look at the hands. Burden barrier. Heart fixer. Mind regulator. Yes, sir. 
top day keeper. All right, all right. All right. All right. All right. All right. It's in the official's hand. If I had my way. What would I do? I, 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 I would turn you loose. That's what I would do. That's what I would do. All right, all right. All right. Woo. All right, all right. All right, official. Glory, glory, glory. Amen. It's good to be here and see your wonderful faces. It's offering, tithe, and giving time. We have ways to give online. That is through PayPal and Giveify. Amen. Check by mail. And when you give, please make a note where you want the money to go to. Up here, we have the red baskets for the preacher, teacher, the speaker. Amen. The one that's going to bring the word this morning. That is our beloved Elder Janet Brown Clayton, amen. We want to give her a round of applause and we also want to be a blessing to her, amen. She's a woman that, um, you ever heard that commercial years ago um, when it says E.F. Hutton? When E.F. Hutton speaks, everybody stop and listen. Amen. So when <laughs> Elder Janet Brown Clayton gets up, amen, and bring forth the word, she is one of those persons that you just got to stop what you're doing and listen, amen, and hear what the Lord has to say to us. And we bless her and we thank her for being the speaker, the preacher, and the teacher this morning, amen. So let's bless her with the outside basket with the red trim. We want to bless her with a generous offering, amen, a liberal and a, a blessing that, hallelujah, she will smile, amen. She'll say, thank the Lord. Look what the Lord has done for me. This church right here really loves me, amen. The baskets be for the offering appearance for the benevolent and the tie box in the middle for the ties. On either end of the church, we would be holding for the debit and credit, amen. When you Give online, just make a note where you wanted to go to. When you give, come up here and um, swipe, please um, be a blessing unto our very own Elder Janet Brown Clayton. Amen is in the hands of the ushers.
Good morning. Please let us hear the announcements. We would like to say happy birthday to Brother Freddie Daniels on today, the 11th. Brother Tony Hoyt today. Brother Kaimik Tucker on the 13th. Sister Monica Ellis on the 15th. And Sister Renee Washington on the 15th. Happy birthday, love your family and your church family. We would like to say congratulations on your retirement after 40 plus years as an LPN RN nursing management. Sister Constance Crosley Myers. Your investment in the lives of others has truly made a difference. You have given hope and encouragement to many. Now the next chapter in your life, may God continue to richly bless you and watch over you and all that you continue to do. Happy retirement. Our Foundations of Faith class will continue on, to, on Tuesday. We are on lesson 13, and that is the last lesson. Um, there are printouts. If they're not out there now, they will be on the table after service. Prayer is from 6.45 to 7, and the class will begin at 7 p.m. Read aloud day, Saturday, August the 17th, from 11 to 12.30. You can contact Lady Hardy. This will be in the Mother Charlotte Taylor um, African American Children's Library. The St. Matthew Singles Ministry Ice Cream Social. The donation is $5. This will be Sunday the 18th, 1 p.m., 25 years and older. The Milk Craft, 200 Crown Street in New Haven. Parking is free. You can RSVP to Sister Teresa Bradley, Sister Linda Coleman, Sister Debbie Bromell, and Sister Janique Clayton. Can you ladies please stand? So if you're interested in going, you can see those ladies. Our nutrition sessions with Dr. Corns. I think I've been saying his name wrong. Corns. Saturday, excuse me, this will be Sunday the 18th at 5 p.m. on Zoom. No, those interested in attending the sessions must attend the July. We already had that one. And the next session, which is on the 18th, and they will be sharing the registration link. Um, so you can see, if you have any questions, you can see Sister Michelle Jones. Um, for more information and more questions. But log on next week and you will get all the details of how the class is going to run and what will take place. Family and Friends Weekend. This will be August the 25th at 10 a.m. And um, Saturday the 24th from 12 to 3, bring the entire family games, food, and music. August is National Hair Loss Awareness Month. St. Matthew's Health and Wellness Committee con recognizes August as National Hair Loss Awareness Month. Stay tuned for more information on this important topic that affects an estimated 56 million adults, men and women. Um, and other announcements. I'm going to ask that you please pick up one of these um, flyers with all the events that will be happening in August and September. There will be a lot going on and we're not going to show the slides every week. So if you pick up one of these, everything is up there and you can stick it on your refrigerator and you will know what's happening and when it's happening. Um, Deacon Rogers is home recovering from minor surgery. Keep him in prayer. Brother Clarence Jackson lost his brother last week. Please keep the Jackson family in prayer as they are still grieving over the loss of Brother McCoy. Deacon Charles Wilkerson had a stroke a few weeks ago. He is home doing physical therapy. Please keep him in prayer as he recovers and keep Deacon Imani in prayer as well. Do we have any visitors? Amen. 
Amen. Go ahead. Amen. On behalf of Pastor Hardy, First Lady Hardy, and the St. Matthew's Church family, we thank you for choosing St. Matthew's as your place of worship. Please come again. I'm going to call Sister Rosa Edwards. Good morning, giving honor to God, to our Pastor Hardy and First Lady Hardy, who's home recuperating from uh, our, um, illness. Um, we wish he was here uh, with us this morning, so keep him lifted in prayer. I uh, just want to thank you for coming out to celebrate our 2024 graduates. Um, could I please have our graduates come forward? And I just want to say, Thank you, thank you. Uh, let me just backtrack for a minute. I, I didn't want to overlook it, um, giving honor to God again and to all the other officials and to our minister of the hour, Elder Janet Brown Clayton. I'm so sorry, I should have said it right after. Um, look at the beautiful students. Um, it wouldn't be possible if it wasn't for your generous donation all year. I just want to thank you. Um, the scholarship committee is very grateful to have a supporting church that we have. And after all, we are the church that cares. So these students are going on to pursue their education. We're proud of them. We love them. I just want to keep the funds coming so that we can make this possible. So this is the first time that we're able to give a free celebration, and it's all because of you. Your generosity, and we are grateful. We are grateful. In the absence of our pastor, we know he is grateful. Um, so we're going to hear from each of the students, and then don't leave. Right after church, come out, celebrate with us. We have lots of pizza and salad, ice cream, everything. Enjoy your day. We appreciate you. We love you and thank God for you. So the first student we're going to hear from and is Zari Bradley. Good morning, church. Give an honor to Give an honor to God, Pastor Hardy, Elder Clayton, and my church family, and the scholarship committee. I just want to thank you guys all because this wouldn't be possible without all of your love and support and your prayers, and it means so much. But as you guys know, my name is Zaria. I graduated from New Haven Academy. I'll be attending Hampton University in the fall. 
I plan to major in entrepreneurship and minor in psychology for my career aspirations to become a business owner or a psychologist. I'm really still up in the air about it. <laughs> Throughout high school, I participated in several extracurriculars, including basketball, and I was president of the, Jack, the New Haven chapter of Jack and Jill of America. And I was on the honor roll, and I received special contributions in several classes, including math, literature, and Spanish. All right. Again, I just wanted to thank my church family for making this all possible for me, and all your love and support, it means the world. And I will carry that with me down to Hampton. Yes. Thank you. Beautiful. Good luck to you. And don't forget about us. Tyler Haynes. Yay, Tyler! You're looking good. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, give honor to our pastor, the men's club, and my church family. As y'all know, my name is Tyler, Tyler Haynes. I'm a graduate from Hamden High School. And this fall, I'll be attending Morgan State University. Uh, <laughs> I will also be majoring in business management and administration. And my career aspiration after completing college is to start a clothing brand. At high school, I was a part of the Hamden High basketball team and received high honors my junior year. And I'm a member of the HBCU Alumni Academy and a 2024 recipient of the St. Matthew's Living Legacy Award. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I enjoy playing basketball with my friends on my free time. And a fun fact that nobody knows that I'm afraid of heights, sadly. <laughs> and that's all. Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck to you, and don't forget about us and keep God first. Liani. <clears throat> Good morning, church. I'm giving an honor to our pastor and first lady, all of you in my church family. My name is Liani Carrera. I, gra I graduated from James Hill High School, class of 2024. I will be joining a life school program called OCC. They will help me learn life skills to able to, able to attend a job. The life school program I will be attending will help me. The, the, I will be attending a, a attending will uh, help me with life skills to able to fend for myself in the future as an adult. I receive <laughs> honest of, I received honest of four years in high school. I am the, I am the oldest child and the firstborn child. I have four baby sisters and one brother. I enjoy spending quality time with them, knowing that couple playing to helping them, helping them learn new things and watching them grow makes me proud. Nice. Yeah, very nice. Isaiah Jackson. Good morning, church. Giving honor to our pastor, my church family, and the scholarship committee. My name is Isaiah Jackson, and in the fall, I will be attending Morehouse College. I graduated from Engineering Science University Magnet School, or ESOMS. Um, I will be studying sports medicine. After I graduate college, I would like to go to graduate school to pursue um, being a personal trainer or a sports doctor. And while in high school, I participated in Higher Heights, uh, NAACP Youth Council and was a West Haven basketball varsity captain for two years. 
and I got honors all four years in high school. I just want to say thank you to everybody who was attending and everybody who couldn't be here. Um, the support is much appreciated by me and my family. Thank you. Good luck. Don't forget about us. Stay in touch. Quick guy first. Destiny White. Good morning, church. Good morning. Um, I give an honor to God, pastor, my church family, and a special thank you to you all for all your donations to the scholarship committee. Um, my name is Destiny White. I graduated from Cooperative Arts and Humanities High School in New Haven, Connecticut. Um, I will be attending Western Connecticut State University in the fall. where I will be majoring in education. After college, my goal is to become an elementary school teacher in the New Haven Public Schools. And later return to college to receive my master's in education. Um, during high school, my, a few of my extracurricular activities were I volunteered at the Yale New Haven Hospital High School program. And I also attended a CONCAT program at Southern Connecticut State University for several years. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. Good luck to you. Stay in touch. Keep God first. Look at the students. Aren't they beautiful? Yeah. Let's give them a, 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 a hand. <clears throat> Thank you, thank you, thank you. And now we will hear from Michelle J. Jones, who's known as Little Michelle, uh, words of encouragement to our students. <laughs> um, since protocol has already been established by our wonderful speakers, I will move swiftly and professionally onto my part of the program. Um, as many of you know, St. Matthew's has a long-standing tradition of sending off its high school graduates with both prayer and provision. This year, we are excited to continue the tradition by honoring these, these our high school graduates from the class of 2024. Graduates, we as a church family are proud of you, and we will be praying for you as you take this, the next step in your respective journeys. In conjunction with today's send-off activities, you will receive a scholarship which signifies St. Matthew's belief in your ability to excel academically, as well as our collective desire to plant a seed into your bright futures. I was asked to share some words of encouragement and thought it best to read an excerpt from Marian Williamson's book, A Return to Love, Reflections on the Principles of A Course in Miracles. It reads as follows. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate, our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God, and your playing small does not serve the world. There's nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel secure around you. We are all meant to shine as children do. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It's not just in some of us, it's in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we're liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. Graduates, we pray God's limitless blessing on you, over you, and a hedge of protection around you as you begin your academic programs. And I'll leave you with Philippians 1 and 6 from the Amplified Bible, which reads, I am convinced and confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will continue to perfect and complete it until the day of Christ Jesus, the time of his return. St. Matthews, please join me in congratulating our graduates and honoring the work that God is doing in them. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you so much. Beautiful, beautiful words from Michelle. Let's give her another round of applause. <clears throat> and while we're at it, I
just want to tell the church, Michelle now is the newest member of the scholarship committee. And uh, we're, we're thankful for her. And she's another, another great, uh, generous donor. So thank you. Um, uh, now, give this to Elder Brenda Ward. Deacon uh, Rogers couldn't be here today, but I want to say to the graduates, um, in the brown bag or the white bag, um, it has in the paper bag, there's a Bible. And he says, always put God first. Global, the world is large. Don't limit yourself. See as much of it as possible. Clock, time, weights for no one. Key, the right key can unlock any door. Pencil, write the vision and make it plain. I had surgery, that's why he's not here today, but he wants to let you know what is in the bag. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, um, thank you Deacon Rogers. I, I hope you were watching us on Zoom. Um, because I know it takes time to do those baskets, and we're thankful for you, and we're wishing you a speedy recovery. Again, I, I want to also thank the people on Zoom for their contribution and their support, in case I didn't mention it. Um, so don't leave. Come out. Celebrate with us. Now we'll hear from Michael Ellison <clears throat> and Quinn Melton. Peace and blessings from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Representing the men's club, we always like to do a donation to our men. Our motto is iron sharpens iron and there's many ways that you can sharpen your knife. I'm sharpening it with a gift, monetary gift to each one of the boy, young men. Isaiah, you're my man. Don't forget us now. To God be the glory, we truly thank God for today and for all the graduates that graduated. I'm going to keep it real with you. I got Tyler. And um, please forgive me for being out of line, but it's real out here in the world. So you must stay prayed up. Always call your family, check on your mom, your grandmother, and your siblings. Stay with the church, call the church from time to time, come back and visit us and figure it out. You're a young man now. It's a big world out there. A lot of opportunity out there. It's all up to you now. You know what to do. You've been through it before. You already know. You heard, you heard all the, you know, all the conversations, all the talks and everything. But most importantly, stay hungry. Even when you're full, put some in the freezer. So when you, when you get empty, you can unpack. That's it. That's it. All right, Deacon Quinn. Let's hear it for the men's club. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay. Okay. I just want to say that um, Isaiah is going to be my Morehouse brother. When he gets inducted to Morehouse on the 18th, I believe. Um, so I'm excited to welcome you into the Spelman Morehouse family. We love you. We wish you the best. Okay, that's it. Um, again, thank you, St. Matthews, the, the church that cared, and we love you. God bless. Um, yes. I just want to also thank Juanita and Tyrone. Um, I know everybody ha contributes, but the, he, he has done a great job with the um, advertisement of our scholarship and celebration. That's our media team, <laughs> okay, the media team as well. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It, uh, we appreciate it, and we love you. <clears throat> now the, the checks.
Okay. Yes. Congratulations to everyone. We love you. Stay safe. Put that verse. Don't forget about St. Matthews. And don't forget about your pastor and first lady. That's it. want to go stand with him to take a picture? Yeah, yeah, I think you should. Yeah. Go ahead. Take a quick, quick, quick picture. Quick. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Anita. Do I give this back over? And thank you for all the guys that set up for us outside the tent for the pizza truck and the ice cream truck. I thank you, Nara. I thank you, Desi, Quinn, and the gentlemen that were helping you this morning. I do not know Deacon Harrow. I do know. Um, but thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Brother Daniels. Okay. And just to add, um, you, you know we are Baptists, so we like a little order. So, <laughs> to this afternoon, we will have tickets. So we will have um, a station that you will pick up a ticket for the pizza and a ticket for the ice cream. So please stop to the station first, so you can have a ticket, and that is what you will present to the trucks to receive your pizza. Amen. Amen. One more thing. If you're not staying, um, we just ask that you remove your you move your cars in the back because we will be in the in the back um, left hand corner of the church where the handicap section is. That's where we will be located. Amen. And I promise you, give me 15 minutes and we'll be out.
does not like him. Father God, we thank you for this time of worship and celebration. Thank you for the living and active word you've given me to sow. Thank you for the hearts that have been made ready to receive. Thank you for these graduates that are about to embark upon a wonderful journey. We pray God's blessings, richest blessings on them as they go. Thank you for making us ready and able to minister according to your word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I have a text from our pastor. And the text says, good morning. I hope you're well. I wasn't supposed to read that part. <laughs> Pastor just wants us to apologize to all of the graduates in the church family for his absence. It could not be helped. He's recovering at home, but he's watching via Zoom. He wants the graduates to know that he is so very proud of all of them and expects great things from all of them. He asks that they grow and develop in their education, that they not forget about their church or their church family. We need them and will continue to pray for them and please let them know that pastor loves them. Congratulations to you all. Amen. Today, y'all are going to help me preach. Everybody, so I heard somebody say, I'm ready. I love it. I love it. Our scripture for today is very, very familiar. Very, very familiar. I'm trying to be technologically savvy and use my phone. Thank you. Very familiar passages of scripture. Psalm 127 and 3 from the English Standard Version or ESV. Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord and the fruit of the womb is blessed. And also Proverbs 22 and 6 from ESV. And it states, train up a child in the way he should go, even when he is old, he will not depart from it. And my subject is very simply, a parent's desire. A parent's desire, you may be seated. 1126. I love the church that cares. I truly do. I mean that from the depths of my heart. I love you all. I just don't want people to be happy twice. You know, happy that we're celebrating the, the graduates, but then happy when I finally sit down. So this message is really for Tyler, Zaria, 
Liani, Isaiah, and Destiny. It's for everybody, but particularly for you all. When we were hearing the scripture, all my life I've heard the scripture, train up a child in the way he should go, and when they are old, they will not depart from it. I thought that meant that you just train them in church and that you don't do anything else but church, and that's not the case. The real meaning of the scripture, train up a child in the way he should go, meaning that you're going to teach them to seek God's wisdom and his will for their abilities and talents. And so that even when they are old, they will not depart from it. And when it says, uh, point your kids or train them up, another translation says, point your kids in the right direction and when they are old, they won't be lost. And as our parents, you can go to a library, you can go to a bookstore, you can get a book on everything from how to build a house, how to make wine, how to ferment, how to compost, but you cannot get a how-to book on how to be a parent. Being a parent is the hardest job because you're investing in your children and you're waiting to see the return. When our children are given to us by God, they're given to us as blank slates. And it is our job to fill in those spaces. So when they start out, you know, when we first start out, we start out in a cloistered environment. You know, we could take care of them at home, teach them what we want to at home. We can control their circle. But then the first time you send them to daycare and they come back home doing and saying something you didn't teach them to do. You know, you wonder and you start turning up the heat in terms of what you want to do for your children, how you want to do what you want them to become. So I told you all, we are all gonna preach. So those of you that can, when I ask you a question, you're going to respond in the affirmative by standing. I'm gonna include the young, younger folk too, and the more seasoned folk. By asking you this question, or these questions, I should say. How many young people thought that your parents were doing entirely too much when they were raising you. It's all right, baby. That's all right. <laughs> but how many of you either through life or raising the children on their own, raising your children on your own, understand why we did what we did? All right, you can have a seat. For our parents, our seasoned people, how many of you want your children to make the mistakes you made? Okay. How many of you want your children to be better than you? Okay, have a seat. How many of you want your children to do more than you did? Okay. How many of you want your children to be brave enough to go places that you didn't go? All right, you can have a seat. The reason I'm asking you to help me preach is because Leonie, Tyler, Destiny, Isaiah, and Zaria, no matter how exciting it is to go away from home, what you're going to find out is that those things that your parents told you and they kept drilling and drilling in you, you're going to hear their voices in your head when you're gone. And our prayer is that that happens. You know why? You're going to encounter people who were not raised like you. People who don't have the foundation you have. You're going to even find yourself looking at them like their, your parents looked at you out the side eye when you started acting a certain way. 
when those things that you they knew they didn't teach you and you might have come in with the ideology and you're going to look at folk the same way because you're going to know that they are not doing or making appropriate choices so the first thing i'm going to charge you with is to listen to that still small voice that's speaking to you and you the bible says my sheep know my voice and a strangers they will not follow it's the same thing with your parents your parents you know your parents voice and a strangers you will not follow if it quacks and it waddles it's a duck stay away from it no matter how freeing it may be to go off and go to school those things that your parents told you and taught you and drilled into your head are going to serve you to make certain that you complete the journey you're on they've invested in you they've seen talents in you that they've pulled out that they've nurtured it is up to you to study to show yourself approved unto god and your parents a workman that needeth not be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth and see god is invested in humanity you know how i know because he gave his only begotten son to die for humanity to bring us back into fellowship and believe it or not, you were created with giftings in you before the foundation of the world. And God knew what those giftings were, and he even chose your parents just for you. Now, let me say this. Every person in here, every woman in here, may not have birthed a child, but you raise a child, it's the same thing whether you're a child by biology design or destiny it's the same thing every parent wants a bright future for their child there is no just like I said there's no book <laughs> that tells you how to raise a child you know they have groups for trauma for PTSD post-traumatic stress syndrome I have never heard a group called PSTSD parental stress traumatic stress syndrome or disorder we go through a lot raising you all nights that we think we're going to sleep but we can't go to sleep till we hear you come in the house Knowing that you're going out with someone, but having to trust you to make the right decision and holding our spiritual breath. The investiture in you is so that you will become the person that God and your parents ordained for you to be. Whether you're going to college, whether you have a career, whether you're going to build up your skills, all of those things are necessary to bring you into alignment with God's plan for you. We have big, big dreams for you, big desires for you, and we're looking for big things from you. Why? Because we know what's in you, we know what we put in you, and we know what we trust in God to bring out. I got three points and I'm done. Your education is vitally important because I heard Tyler say he wants to design a clothing line. There are a lot of things that can be taken away from you. A lot of things that will go out of style and that will be outdated. Your education is not one of them. Your education will continue to benefit you and bring different avenues and opportunities your way. It is vitally important that you treasure every experience that you have in school. Study hard 
and prove yourself to yourself. You know why? Because there are many naysayers. You, it's easy to find naysayers that will tell you what you can't do. I had a professor when I was 19 years old, and you all have heard me tell this, who told me I would never amount to anything. And I thank her today because every time I thought about giving up, I remember what she said. And I could not make it a self-fulfilling prophecy. Also, you can't let your own fear keep you from doing what you're capable of doing. Amen? Amen. And my final point is always put God first. Because if you do that, you guarantee your success. Why do I say that? Because the Bible says, acknowledge him in all your ways, and he will direct your path. You may never speak this to your parents, but as excited as you are about going away to school, there's going to come a time, even if it's in the first weeks while you're in the dorm, you're going to, parents are going to be gone. You're in the dorm by yourself. The thought will come to you, what made me think I could do this? I, pr I promise you it will, because it happened to me. It, and let me, let, me, let me tell you this, it even happened to me as a professional. When I accepted new jobs and more promotion, I get in my office, close the door, and there was always a terrifying moment. What made me think I could do this? And then automatically, I would say, God, you promised me if I acknowledged you in all my ways, you would direct my path. Now listen to this. It did not say if you do everything right, if you do everything godly, if you do this and then acknowledge him, he'll direct. Mm -mm. God watches over his word to perform it. If you acknowledge him, he's obligated to direct your path. I am not advocating for sinning or lose, you know, living loosely or none of that. But what I am saying to you is if you always trust God, put him first, you won't go wrong. And the way you can measure if it's God speaking to you or not, the devil will never tell you anything to do that's going to be beneficial. Never. I'm going to give you this example, and I am 14 minutes. <sighs> when I got ready to be, um, when I was appointed principal of Lincoln Bassett, all eyes were on me and I knew it. And I was all right when I was out in public. But then when I got in the office, I said, God, what made me think I could do this? The Holy Spirit directed me to have prayer every day. I said, but God, I can't have prayer in this school. That's, that's um, against church and state. Holy Spirit told me to call it optional staff meeting. And have it every morning at 8 15. and anybody who wanted to come could come you didn't get in trouble for not coming but you know what every time something bad happened every teacher in the building came to prayer one morning we were walking around with the state commissioner and the superintendent of schools and they wanted to see the school and i kept looking at my watch and the commissioner said Janet, are we keeping you from something? I said, well, we have optional staff meeting at 8.15. Thought that I'd smoothed it over, right? She said, well, what is optional staff meeting? I said, oh, Lord, here we go. Right? But guess what? My assistant principal said to me, we pray. Would you like to join us? And guess what? They joined us for prayer. I am telling you, I'm telling you what I know, not what I heard. 
if you acknowledge God in all your ways, he will direct your path. I was in danger of not graduating because of prejudice by that same person who told me I'd never amount to anything. The Holy Spirit said, talk to somebody. I'm like, I don't know who to talk to. And I'm just sitting there. I wasn't going to talk to anybody. A black counselor walked by and said, Brown, what's the matter? I said, well, and I told her. She said, come to my office tomorrow morning. We'll be all right. I went to her office the next morning. She said, take this to doctor, and she will sign your graduation. I am telling you what I know. Acknowledge him in all your ways, and he will direct your path. Let's look to the Lord for, and, and praise him for the word. We are duty bound to pray for our graduates and to hold them up before the Lord. We're going to open the doors of the church at this time. If you do not know the Lord as your personal savior, this is the time that you can come forward and give your life to Christ. What that means is in Romans 10, 9 and 10, it says, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Because with the mouth confession is made unto salvation, and the heart man believeth unto righteousness. Also at this time, we're also going to open the doors of the church. If you don't have a church home, and you want to become a part of this body of believers, the church that cares, you can come at this time. We will welcome you with open arms. We have never said that we are perfect, but we do love. And love covers a multitude of faults. Amen. Amen. As I've already said, we're going to hold our graduates in prayer. I'm an HBCU alumnus myself from Lincoln University in Oxford, Pennsylvania. We're going to also pray for their parents. Pray for the parents because their babies are gone. And they have to trust what they've invested to give them a return. Amen? Amen. If nothing else holds our attention... Let's look to the Lord to be dismissed. Amen. I certainly hope that nobody felt shortchanged, but we had a whole lot of good word going forth in here today. A whole lot of good word. And sometimes when you overfeed a baby, they regurgitate. You want them to retain what you have given them. Amen. Father, we thank you and we praise you for this time of worship. We thank you and we praise you, God, for blessing our graduates and their parents. Father, we ask that you continue to hold them in the hollow of your hand. Oh, God, watch over them. Watch over your word to perform it in their behalf. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Now unto him, I'm sorry, I want to be obedient, thank you. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us, to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Father, we thank you for completing and fulfilling a parent's desire. And everyone that agrees with that prayer says, amen. amen. There will be prayer available at the front. And we're going to ask that you abide by the directions of the persons that are going to be outside. But also that you govern yourselves accordingly for the prayer that's going to be up front. <laughs> 